the CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. It's a little game many people play on a train or a bus. You look at a complete stranger seated across the aisle. Your mind begins to speculate. Who is he or she? And you go through the standard answers. Rich person, poor person, beggar person, thief, doctor, lawyer, Indian, chief. It's a harmless diversion, and it passes a time. But is it possible to look at someone's face and say, murderer? And be right. You were in on the plan to kill Mr. Rogers. I didn't know Mr. Rogers. You arranged to meet with him so he could be set up for the murder. That isn't true. Then what were you doing at the railway station in a dangerous neighborhood at midnight? I can't tell you. Please, don't ask me again. I can't tell you. Our mystery drama, A Quiet Evening at Home was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Tammy Grimes. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Alicia Merriweather, or as she is listed in the society columns, Mrs. Albert Emmons Merriweather III, is having breakfast in her luxurious penthouse apartment in an eastern city. Her maid has the day off, and her cook is on vacation. And so Mrs. Merriweather is quite alone, and has been compelled to brew her own coffee and burn her own toast, even as you and I. But Mrs. Merriweather doesn't mind... She's a good sport, and not bad-looking, either. As a matter of... Oh, there goes the telephone. And she'll have to answer it herself. Hello? My dear? Yes? Oh, I was so alarmed. Alarmed? Why, Albert, dear? Well, the session broke up rather late last night, and I returned to the hotel, and I telephoned you. And the phone rang and rang without an answer. I couldn't imagine where you might be. I was here. I'd gone to sleep early. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I thought. Just a nice, quiet evening at home. I do hope you aren't bored. Oh, I loved it. How was the convention? Oh, it's rather a drag. Well, try to have a good time. Uh, darling, I, uh, I may be compelled to remain here the rest of the week. I'm sorry. Just be a dear and get everything done and hurry home. Well, I'll have to say goodbye. It's time for my speech. I know you'll bring them shouting to their feet. Well, I'll get through it somehow. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, dearest. Yes. Such a dear little man. And I just adore him. Really adore him. Hello? Dearest. Alicia. Yes, it's your darling Alicia. Have you forgotten last night? Oh, how can I forget last night? But they, you shouldn't call me here. She'd have answered out of hung up. Oh, that can be just as suspicious. Is she home? No, no, fortunately she has a golf date. Then you can tell me you love me. I love you, Alicia. Even a train announcer puts more passion into his voice than that. I love you, darling. And I love you, Bruce. Oh, how I love you. Look, it, it, it's, it's only ten o'clock. Is something wrong? Yes. It's wrong that I have to wait two whole hours before I can see you. Ah, uh, well, those two hours will pass before you know it. You sound so cool, so sure of me. Darling, I'll see you at Marvetti's at noon. Bruce, it's possible that we might be seen together in Marvetti's. It's possible, but it'll look as if we merely ran into each other. All right. And besides, by this time tomorrow, will it matter what people think? Alicia. Sit down, Bruce. I've already ordered your drink. Oh, and without ice. 
I see you remember. I have so much to learn about you and so much to remember. Uh, are, you, are, are you sure you want to go through with this? Yes. And you? Well, you know, when you think of how short life really is, can you waste even a moment without the one you love? Have you really thought about it? What's to think about? She's a very wealthy woman. Well, your Albert's a very wealthy man. You have no money of your own. <laughs> Neither do you. Yes, but... Are you trying to talk me out of it? Oh, no. It's just that you've become used to... to the ease, the luxury of life with her. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what you can never get used to. The knowing glances and the self-righteous smirking of people who consider you a... a kept man. Bruce. Yeah, yeah, you marry a woman who's ten years older and wealthy and what's the world supposed to believe? And, and, and it's true. I married her for her money, for her position, and uh, for her influence. Surely you must have loved her a little bit. Well, I loved her as uh, much as you loved Albert Emmons Merriweather III. I tried to love Albert. I tried to be a good wife to him. But I just can't live this kind of lie hey, well, any uh, longer. Neither can I. Oh, darling, it's wonderful that we found each other and fell in love. And we can save each other. You won't be sorry. I'll be with you. How? How could I be sorry? Neither of us have any money of our own. Well, I have a degree in engineering. You know, I can get a job. I, I can even teach in high school. Man. <laughs> what? Well, what's funny? Oh, you are Bruce Tyler, former millionaire sportsman teaching mathematics. And I can see you in a ready-made corduroy jacket with leather patches on the elbows. Patches I myself sewed on. And, oh, and that beautiful socialite, Mrs. Albert Emmons Merriweather, living in some dusty suburb, doing her own laundry. But I won't be Mrs. Merriweather. I'll be Mrs. Bruce Tyler. Uh, 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 let's finish lunch. Yeah, there's a lot to do. And we'll each take one suitcase. And meet at the station and catch the 10.30. Well, no, well, that, that's rather late now that I think of it. For, I mean, for you to go to the station alone. I'm not afraid. Well, well I'll, I'll get there early. You know, still, we could drive to New York. No. Your first instinct was right. If you took a car, it would be her car. Let's each leave with nothing that belongs to them. Darling, you won't be sorry. How can I be sorry? I'll have you. Will you be sorry? Never. This is the happiest day of my life. Bruce? Uh, oh, I'm uh, sorry I'm not Bruce. Oh, excuse me. No, oh, no, no, no. It's quite all right. I, uh, I was expecting to meet someone here. <laughs> it's Bruce. Yes. Uh, which train are you making? The 10.30 to New York. I think I'm a bit early. Uh, well, I'm uh, early myself. I'm catching the 10.35. I'm going the other way to Washington. It's uh, rather deserted here in the station. Yeah, yeah, in the old days, this railroad station was a busy, bustling place at all hours. <laughs> you seem rather young to remember the old days. I remember some of them. So, where's Bruce? Oh, he'll be here. <laughs> no sign of him. He has to be here. Uh, I don't see anybody come up the street either. What time is it? I, uh, I have 10.25. He'll be here any minute. <laughs> so will the train. Are you sure it's 10.25? Well, not anymore. In about 35 seconds, it'll be 10.26. I... Something the matter? He has to be here. He promised. Well, he, <clears throat> he still has a few minutes. What are you grinning at? <laughs> I'm sorry. Middle-aged romance should be touching rather than humorous. What are you talking about? Are you and Bruce, whoever he is, running away? I'm sure that's not your affair. Oh, of course, it was. it's your affair. Somehow, and I don't ask me why, I feel that Bruce is not worthy. I'll thank you to mind your own business. <laughs> well, here comes the train. That's a time. But where's Bruce? He's... He'll be here. Conductor, to hold the train. Someone's coming. He, he'll be here. He promised he'd be here. What? Please, wait. Well? He's not here. Well, the evening doesn't have to be a total loss. How would you like to go to Washington? Huh? He isn't here. I can promise you an exciting weekend you'll never forget. Is there a telephone? <laughs> Does it matter? The train's leaving. Yes. I see one. 
just up ahead, a booth. Well, I never did like Bruce. Something must have happened. He's ill. I must call. Yeah, uh, hurry. The Washington train will be here in five minutes. Sir, I am not going to Washington with you. Well, you don't have to get angry. Besides, these things happen for the best, you know. Please, excuse me. Oh, damn. Sir? Sir, could you... Uh, how can I help? I... I don't have any change. <laughs> you simply weren't prepared for anything. Now, the next time... Do you have a dime? Yeah, sure, of course. Here you are. Thank you. Oh, I wonder what he'll have to say for himself. Poor fella. Lost his nerve at the last minute, I'll wager. Don't tell me. I'll bet his wife answered. You're so smart. You think you know everything. Well, you know, these are familiar dramas. Well, now, we have three minutes and 30 seconds before the Washington train gets in, so why don't you... Why, why don't you get out of here? What? Get out of here. That's a gun. You got a gun. You're holding a gun. There is going to be trouble. Well, what are you saying? You'll have to run for it. What are you talking about? Who was that? He's shooting at us. Who? Quick. Get on the other side of the billboards and now run. Run toward the other end of the platform. Why? That's why. Now, if there's only one of them, I've got a chance. Now run. But you'll be killed. Does that mean you have to be killed, too? I'm, I'm frightened. You don't have time for that. He's working his way in. Why does anyone want to kill you? Run as fast as you can down to the end of the platform. That man. He just stuck behind a post. A short man. Do what I tell you. Run to the end of the platform, down the stairs, into the street, and around the corner. Get going. I'm scared. Run. Run. Taxi. Taxi. Take me. Take me to uh, 17 Rossville Circle. And hurry. Hurry, please. <laughs> I, uh, I'm afraid you must have the wrong number. Bruce, is she standing there? Is that why? I'm sorry, there's uh, no one here by that name. Bruce! And are you all right this morning, my dear Estelicia? Yes, Albert, dear. Yes, just fine. Did you do anything last night, darling? Did I do anything last night? Uh, no. I just stayed at home and went to bed early. Just a quiet evening at home. Now, dear, you should get out and have some fun, some excitement. That's all right, dear. I, uh, I don't miss it. Now, dear, I must hang up now. We have a breakfast meeting. I'll be home at the end of the week. Goodbye, Albert. Henrietta, get the door, will you please? Damn, that's right. I gave you the time off. Just a minute. Yes? Good morning. I'm Detective Lieutenant Berger, homicide. Oh? My credentials. I see. May I come in? Thank you. May I ask the purpose of this visit, Lieutenant? I must ask you to come to police headquarters. Police headquarters? Why? What for? There's been a murder. Well, how? How does that concern me? Well, at the very least, you're a material witness. That's impossible. You might even be an accessory. But it's ridiculous. I'm required to tell you that anything you say may be used against you. Material witness, accessory. What's this? We were there. All she wanted to do was run away with her lover. Evidently, that can turn out to be a hazardous pastime. And in this case, it doesn't become very much safer in Act Two, which I shall bring you in just a few moments. Life is filled with little surprises. All that Alicia Merriweather wanted to do was run away with Bruce Pennington. 
They were to meet at the railway station late last night. Well, train time came, but Bruce failed to appear. Another gentleman, however, did show up, but he was murdered. And now, a police detective is saying to Mrs. Merriweather... Mrs. Merriweather, at about 10.30 last night, a man named Cleveland Rogers was shot to death at the Northside Railroad Station. Yes? A cab driver named Barney McCool was cruising about a block away. He heard the shots, but he supposed at the time that they were backfires from a car or a truck. And do you follow this? Well, uh, I... And then he saw you. Me? He described you most accurately. He saw you running from the railroad station. You got into his cab, and when he heard about the murder, naturally he reported it to the police. Is he sure it was me? The address is recorded on his trip sheet. Is anyone else living here who resembles you? No, but... Do you deny you were at the railroad station? What were you doing there at that hour? Do you deny that you knew Mr. Rogers? Well, you don't have to talk to me, but you'll have to talk to somebody. I'd advise you to call your attorney. My attorney? Look, Mrs. Merriweather, I'm sure your husband has an attorney. Oh, no. I heard of your husband. A man like him, he's got to have an attorney. No, I couldn't talk to him. All right. Let's go. Go? Where? What do you think we've been talking about? The police headquarters. But I can't do that. My husband will find out. I don't see how that can be avoided. But it must be avoided. It must be avoided at all costs. Mrs. Merriweather, we're dealing here with murder. But I had nothing to do with it. What were you doing at the railway station? Now, why do you refuse to answer that question? Because. Because I can't. If you won't say why you were at the station, we will have to conclude it's for a reason you don't want known. For instance, why was Cleveland Rogers at the station? A lonely place like that. Especially since he knew certain people may have been looking for him. Mrs. Merriweather, were you the decoy? What are you saying? Rogers had an eye for a good-looking woman. Were you the one used by the killers to lure him to his death? Lure him to his death? This sounds like a, like a thing in a tabloid paper. Yeah, I'm afraid it does. You're talking to me. I am the wife of Mr. Albert Emmons Merriweather III. What would I know about gangsters, mobsters, killers? I don't know what you do in your spare time. This this is monstrous. Yeah. Yeah, murder is. And it's not just the murder itself which is bad enough, but the company it keeps, the trail it leaves. The victim isn't the only one whose life has been destroyed. If you do not explain your presence on that platform, people will form their own conclusions. But how? And they will not be flattering to you. And what will you do if the killer claims you were in it with him? And then turn state's evidence to save his own neck? Please, please believe me. I had nothing. Believe me, I'd like to believe you. But you must meet me halfway. What were you doing there? I... Please, leave me alone. Are you protecting someone? How did you know? Are you? I'm, I'm protecting someone. And I'm also protecting myself. No. No, you're not protecting yourself. You're destroying yourself. Now. But there's somebody else. Were you... Were you supposed to meet someone at the station... Yeah, of course. It's the only thing that makes sense. Who? I... I'm not at liberty to tell you. Mrs. Merriweather, you must tell me. Why? Why do you have to know who he is? Because he has to corroborate your story. Oh. Yes, that's what it comes down to. Oh. You see, Mrs. Merriweather, sooner or later, you'll have to tell us his name. (laughs) Mr. Pennington... Do you know a Mrs. Alicia Merriweather? Uh, yes, I, uh, yeah, I believe I do. Al, Al Merriweather's wife. May we speak freely here? Are we alone? Yes, and my wife's out playing golf. <laughs> a demon golfer, that woman. Uh, well, what's this all about? Had you planned to leave your wife and go away with Mrs. Merriweather? <sighs> Had I planned 
Look, I uh, don't understand why you should ask me such a question. Because I want an answer. It's one of the police concerned in such personal matters, huh? We're always involved in personal matters where murder is concerned. Murder? According to Mrs. Merriweather, you and she had planned to run away together to meet at the North Side Station and catch the 1030 train to New York. While she was waiting, there was another man on the platform, and he was shot to death. Huh? Oh, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I uh, read about it in the morning paper. Had you planned to meet Mrs. Merriweather at the station? Well, I still don't see why the law would ask such a question. If the two of you had not planned to meet there, Mrs. Merriweather could be in trouble. Trouble? Considerable trouble. Because how could she account for her presence at the station? Oh. Huh. You still haven't answered my question. Uh, uh, your, uh, your question? Had you and Mrs. Merriweather planned to meet at the station last night? Why, no, of course not. She says you did. Does she? Yes. How do you account for it? Well, I, I can't account for it. Well, but on the other hand, maybe I can. Is that so? How? She, uh... Well, you know, she, she always had kind of a crush on me, and... Well, she's a very romantic woman, and so... Perhaps she let herself imagine. Let me get this straight here. What you're saying is you made no arrangements to meet Mrs. Merriweather at the railway station last night. Well, of course not. Oh, well, this is the first I've ever heard of it. But it's true. It's true. I'm sorry, Mrs. Merriweather. We'll see about that. Mrs. Merriweather. We, we agreed to meet. Something happened. He must have been ill. I bet his wife answered. He's ill. That's why he couldn't meet me. He's ill. Well, he appeared in pretty good shape to me. But we... We decided... I wouldn't call again if I were you. The way it looks, he's not going to answer that phone for a long time. You don't understand. We, we're we in love. Mm-hmm. I understand this. You're holding the bag. Okay, I believe you. Sure. You did decide to run away together. You did decide to meet last night at the train station. But I spoke to him just before, and he had the look of a guy who changed his mind. Don't say that. He said it to me. He told you he changed his mind? His manner told me. The tone in his voice told me. It's her money, isn't it? How? How did you know? These things show. I caught a glimpse of her as I was leaving. Big, horse-faced dame. Not at all pretty like you. No style. I can see where a guy could get fed up with her. But at the last split second, he remembers why he married her in the first place. The money. But he loves me. Oh, I'm sure. But he loves the money more. Meanwhile, you're in a jam. You can't account for your being at the railroad station. I told you. It was to meet Bruce. I know you told me. You believe me, don't you? I believe you. As a man. But it won't help you. Why not? Because he's going to deny that story. How can he? I'll... I'll face him. I'll... He has to. If he admits it, she'll throw him out in his ear. So it doesn't look good, huh? You better sit down, Mrs. Merriweather. Lieutenant, I'm frightened. My husband is going to find out. I'm sorry. What was a madness? I see now. It was a temporary madness. The whole thing with Bruce. But he came to his senses before I did, that's all. And now I'm going to be disgraced before the entire world. I'm going to be disgraced. I'll be ruined. Now, look, I'll try to help you as much as I can. Nobody can help me. I got into this myself. I'll have to get out of it myself. My problem is I'm getting panicky. I have to be calm. I have to... Think this thing through, logically, and arrive at it. Arrive. Yes. Yes, I've got it. I'll deny everything. What will you deny? I'll start right here, right now, and I'll deny everything I ever said to you. And so, therefore, if you have come here to talk to me, you're wasting your time and mine. I was not at the railway station. Oh, come on now, Mrs. Merriweather. We have this cab driver. Yes? And he has his trip ticket. You've already told me about him. What else have you got? What else do we need? 
He says he picked me up a block from the railway station. Less than a block, and you're in a highly agitated state. Was I? That's what he says. You realize it's his word against mine. Oh, now, Mrs. Merrill. He can say whatever he pleases. I'll deny it. I see. Well, explain why he should falsely identify you. I haven't the faintest idea. It isn't my problem. But what reason could he possibly have? Well, let me see. Suppose I put it this way. At one time, I had refused him my, uh, favors. And he wants his revenge. Mrs. Merriweather, please, make sense. He identifies me, does he? I'll identify him. Let him dare to open his mouth. I'll point to him in that courtroom. I'll recognize him as a cab driver who picked me up some time ago and made me an indecent proposition. I laughed at him. That's the worst thing you can do to a man. Now, look, you know and I know you were at the station last night. I know nothing of the sort. But you admitted it to me. You can't prove it. I'll deny everything. I'll insist this is all some evil plot designed to destroy me and my husband. Remember, all you have is that unsupported word of a cab driver. I see. His word against mine. And now, sir, I bid you good morning. Unless, of course, you intend for me to accompany you to police headquarters. In which case, you will have to take me there by force. Now, oh, look, this isn't your style. You're basically a very nice lady who's been caught up in an indiscretion. I must ask you to leave. Now, first, I must tell you a story. I'm not interested. It's very brief. A playboy named Cleveland Rogers runs up a very large gambling debt with an underworld organization. I've heard that before. And they decide, for a number of reasons, to kill him. You've already told me. And they do kill him. Last night. At the station. You are a witness. You can't prove I was there. Right. I can't. The law can't. But the law is not your problem. Your problem is with the killers of Cleveland Rogers. They know you were there. They know there's a witness. And they know they have to kill you. And I know when somebody's trying to scare me. Let me put it to you this way. We found you. Now... Can you be sure that the killers won't be able to find you? How can they find me? They didn't even see me. From a distance, maybe. But they don't know what I look like. And furthermore... Yes? Oh, my good Lord. Hey, hey, Mrs. Merriwell, what's wrong? Do you want a glass of water? My... My suitcase. Your suitcase? I, I brought a suitcase. And when I ran away, I didn't think... I was so scared, I forgot I had it. I left it right there on the platform, outside the telephone booth. We didn't find a suitcase on the platform. Then they have it. The ones who killed Mr. Rogers. They have it. And it has things in it. With... with my name... and address. doesn't do things by halves, does she? And when her plans go awry, they go all the way, don't they? Poor Alicia Merriweather. All she wanted was some love, some romance, a dashing husband instead of a dull one. Is that so terrible? Who are we to judge? Well, let's see how things develop in Act Three. suppose you can blame it all on love. The fact is, everybody wants love. The problem is, some people look for it after they're married. Mrs. Alicia Merriweather, bored with an unexciting husband, thought she could do better by running away with someone else, with results that uh, you are already aware of. He knows who I am. That man knows who I am. Which man? The man who killed Mr. Rogers. Then you saw the killer. I heard the shot. I looked down toward the other end of the station. He was running towards us. A short, stocky man. A short? He didn't know Mr. Rogers had a gun. Mr. Rogers let him get close, and then he fired. He missed, and the man ducked behind a post. 
But I saw his face. His face. It was such an evil face. No. What do you mean, evil? You look at that face, and you saw evil. You felt evil. You knew there was evil. But what did it look like? It was... He had a round, small eyes, thin lips, a horrible scar across his cheek. A scar? For a moment, a terrible thought flashed through my mind. I was committing evil in leaving my husband, and now I was being punished. Yeah, it figures. Honeycomb Sweet. I thought he had come to punish me. Donald Sweet, known as Honeycomb. Some name for a hitman, huh? Lieutenant... Why should he want to kill me? Is she a witness to a murder? His murder? Who... Who says I'm going to testify? I mean, is there some way I can assure him he's safe as far as I'm concerned? Is there... Now, look, Mrs. Merriweather, you're becoming hysterical. Certainly, and with good reason. Could I place an ad in the paper? To the gentleman who committed murder on the night of April 11th on the north side station platform. I will not testify against you. Sign the witness. Uh, Let me get you a glass of water. I can't become involved. I can't. Now, please, get control of yourself. It's all over for me. All over. If this evil man doesn't kill me, Albert will divorce me. The story will come out. It will, won't it? Well, some of it, yeah. And I deserve it. Why? Why did I ever... What did I ever see in Bruce Pennington... Calm yourself, please. Weakling, a coward, a foolish insipid. He didn't mean a word of what he said to me. And the last minute is true nature. Mrs. Merriweather, you must try to think rationally. What do you suppose I'm doing? Yes. Albert, calm, patient, kindly. Oh, Albert. Now that it's too late. I realize how much I love you. Mrs. Merriweather, about the murder. Do you realize I've ruined my life? Completely. Albert was quiet so much of the time. But that's because he was thoughtful. Bruce talked all the time. And I see now it was the chatter of a parrot. Your life is in danger. It doesn't matter. What am I going to live for? Mrs. Merriweather, we have to go downtown. Why? You're not safe here. We'll have to place you under protective custody. Does this mean I'm under arrest? It means we're going to protect you. And... Of course, everyone will know. We'll try to keep it as quiet as we can. I guess your husband will have to know. That's everybody. This can't be helped. Suppose I refuse to go with you. If you agree to drive downtown with me in my car, we can do it quietly. On the other hand, if you want to make an issue of it, you're asking for publicity. I have one hope. One slim, forlorn hope. And that is... That this is a dream, a nightmare, and I'll wake up. I'm sorry. I'm ready. Shall we go? Will, will there be reporters? No, no, not yet. Not yet? You'll be booked quietly. Booked? You see, you're a material witness. But I'll be under arrest. No, not exactly. It's all kind of a gray area. But my connection with this, it will come out. Uh, Yes, if we go to trial. Of course, Mr. Merriweather will have to know. Yes. I can tell by that yes that you're frightened. How unbelievably perceptive you are, Lieutenant. Tell him everything. Confess. Are you mad? No, no. If you love him and he loves you, then the truth will only make that love stronger. Where did you read that, Lieutenant? I happen to believe it. Oh. Uh, Lieutenant, could you stop here for a moment in front of that drugstore? Well, I... There are a few things I have to pick up. Uh, All right. I won't be a minute. Do you have a, a telephone booth? Oh, I see it. Hello, Bruce. Don't hang up. Alicia. You're alone? Uh, yes. You're not as alone as I am. Uh, Alicia, I, I, I'm 
sorry. The truth is, I'm, I'm just I'm just not worthy of you. That's true. I didn't have the courage to go through with it. I'm in trouble, Bruce. I know. My life is in danger. Al Alicia, Al if there's anything I can do, I mean, in, in a quiet, discreet way... I just called to say goodbye. Goodbye? It's enough that I destroyed my own life. I won't ruin Albert's. Where are you going? Oh, I I'm supposed to go to police headquarters. You'll be safe there. Instead, I'll, I'll just sneak out of here the back way. But, 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 but where will you go? As far as my money takes me. And hope that no one ever finds me. Goodbye, Bruce. Uh, uh, Alicia. Yes? Good. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, do you have a rear entrance? Oh, uh, never mind. I see it. Are you free? Oh, excuse me. I, I didn't know you had a fare. Get in, sister. It's, it's you. Don't make a sound or I'll cool you off right here. Get in and sit down. The man on the platform. Let's go, Curly. You. You're the man who, who... That's right. I'm the man who. I'm always the man who. Where are you taking me? You hear that, Curly? She wants to know where I'm taking her. What are you going to do with me? That's one of those things. One of which things? Why do you use euphemisms? I beg your pardon. Why did you come out and say what you mean? Why don't you admit you're going to kill me? Most people, you know, they don't like to hear the real words. Well, why do you want to kill me? I don't want to kill you. I have to kill you. Why? You know why. Because I can identify you as the murderer of Cleveland Rogers. I tell you, Curly, this is a dame that lays it right in there. Suppose I promise you I won't do that. Yeah? Yes. What do you think I was doing on that platform last night? I never gave it a thought. I was running away from my husband. With Rogers? No. But the man didn't show up. He's a chump. Then you came along and killed Mr. Rogers. If I identify you, then I'll have to answer a certain question. Namely... What were you doing on the station that hour of the night? Exactly. And it would be better for me if that question never came up. I'm married to a very conservative man. I see the diagram. So, I will give you my word that I will never testify against you. And that should solve the problem. Yeah, it should. But it won't. It won't? Why not? In the first place, if I knock you off, I know you'll never testify against me. And I only bet on sure things. But it's against my own interest to identify you. I would never endanger my marriage. I know you say I that. mean it. You think you mean it. But you can't beat the way you were raised, which was straight. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to start to bother you. You're going to have to do the right thing. You can't fight the way you're made. And you're going to suffer plenty, too. So look, believe me, what I'm going to do, it's going to be the best for the both of us. Hey, Curly, it's a cop's car in back of us. Step on it. Hey, he's gaining on us. Let me bust out the rear window. See if I can stop him. I'm not that chump off the road. Who can't shoot back at us. They'll be scared of the dame. Ah, that made him think twice. Let me bag him with the next shot. Hey, 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 let go. No. Let go of me, you crazy no. dame. Let go of my arm. I'll kill you. You'll kill me anyhow. I'll kill you now. Try it. You crazy dame. You. Behind the wheel. You, Curly. I've got this gun pointed at your head. And I think you better slow down. That's it. Now pull over. Go on, pull over to the side. Mrs. Merriweather, you okay? Here. Yeah. Please take this gun. I think I'm gonna faint. <laughs> It was self-defense, so you're in the clear. But, uh, will I get my name in the papers? Well, we decided for your own safety to keep you out of it. The papers will say he was killed in a high-speed chase. <sighs> so, Mrs. Merriweather, I think you're out of it. Thank you, Lieutenant. 
Thank you for everything. You never did tell me how you happened to come along at the right time. <laughs> there was nothing to it. I watched you come out of the phone booth and head for the rear exit. I drove around the block just as the cab was pulling away from the curb. Oh, I, um, I guess this is goodbye. Yes. Goodbye, Mrs. Merriweather. Alicia, my dear. Albert, you're back. Yes, yes, I've had enough of the convention. Oh, Albert, may I present, um, uh, Lieutenant Berger? Of the, uh, police? Uh, yes, yes, I, uh... I'm selling tickets for the police department dance. Oh, well, let's buy some, by all means. Well, I already have. Oh, thank you so much. And good night. No, don't bother. I can let myself out. <laughs> you know, uh, when I heard he was a police officer, for a moment I was afraid something might have happened. Why, Albert, darling, what could possibly happen? <laughs> uh, tell me... How did you spend your time tonight, eh? Oh, it was just another quiet evening at home. Has Alicia learned her lesson? I don't know. Does anyone ever really learn a lesson? You think she'll be happy with Albert now? Or will she have her head turned by the next handsome guy who happens along? Another thought. Albert. Was he really at a convention? Who can tell? All I know is I'll be back before you have a chance to miss me. to our story, and that is, it may be good to be born intelligent, but it's better to be born lucky. Good looks will probably take a lady further than mere virtue. Consider most of the ladies who have made it in this world. As a rule, were they homely and virtuous, or lucky and beautiful? Well, Homely or handsome, intelligent, virtuous, or fortunate, or whatever, you are all welcome to assemble with us here. Our cast included Tammy Grimes, Robert Dryden, Leon Janney, and Earl Hammond. Entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. And if you want to join me, join me. Just remember one thing, son. From this day forward, till I give you the nod, we never saw each other any time, anywhere. <laughs> was a night, moon up or moon down, that I don't ache for you, Rainbow. Why did you leave me behind? Yes, yes, Mrs. Moonlight, I know, I know, she's gone. Time for you and me to take the little sleep. The big one is not scheduled for us yet. The future is still ordained. I wonder what it holds. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
Thank you for watching. Don't forget to join our channel's membership and unlock special perks such as exclusive contents and more. Until next time, take care.